Yeah, no, I, you always talk about the right things in the room. It's just going out and executing. I just think there's belief, and, and the guys went out and did it. I think uh, it was like seven of our last eight games. We've been in one goal games uh, until the last Michigan State game. So, like, they're used to that, and it's there's been a lot of pain throughout the, the third periods like we talked about earlier in the year, and um, they've, they've grown and they've learned from it, which is great. What do you think the, the likelihood is that Sheamus is able to play in the Frozen Four? 100%. 100%? Yeah. A lot of emotions from you after the win we saw in the locker room. Can you just talk about what's going through your head after that? Yeah, it's just so – I was talking to someone else about it, like coaches, players, like there's just so much emotion of the highs and lows of the season and you put so much into it and uh, a lot of time away from your family and, and even when you're there, your brain may be on other things at different times. So uh, honestly, I, I – I know exactly what you're talking about, and I got emotional when I looked up and my nine-year-old was crying in the stand, so that's what got me in. Um, but it's good, all positive stuff. How do you not, you the team, the program, not take these for granted, right? Like, just, here, we, here we go again, right? Yeah, no, we're extremely fortunate. Um, it's really, really hard to do. I've been blessed since I've been here to do it three out of three years, and uh, it's not always about having the best team. It's getting some bounces, a little bit of luck, and then earning your opportunities. So we understand, we appreciate what we've done, but I don't know if it's truly hit us. It feels like in college hockey, a lot of the time experience is a term thrown around for like juniors, seniors, fifth year guys. How much experience do you think your, your sophomores have had from what they've been through the past two years, Frozen Fours, Big Ten Championships? I, I would say the junior class, the junior and senior class for sure, with COVID and a coaching change and uh, going to the Frozen Four, like you said, the last two years, uh, that stuff matters. Um, and it's, you know, everyone can say the right things, but for them to go through it and have the right team talk, and then you just kind of hope it goes your way. You've been around college hockey a long time. Where do you think like the talent level stands out in, in, in this Frozen Four to maybe in years past? It seems like it's a loaded group. Yeah, yeah it's it's awesome. College hockey's uh, it's just getting better and better every year. Um, the young talent, the the older, mature guys that are signing as NHL free agents, it's it's awesome to watch. But you know, BC, BU, Denver, all those guys have. Guys that just went top five, top ten, multiple guys, guys that are draft eligibles. Um, you know, and then obviously we have our high end guys too, so it's fun to watch. What's the keys to kind of slowing down BC's top two lines? Obviously a lot. Uh, same as every team. It's it's not just about them. I mean, like we just play two really good teams that are play fast off transition and generate a lot off the rush. Um, and it's not that they don't generate in other areas, but they're just really good in those areas. I think BC's a lot of the same. They're what second um, overall goals, second in power play, first PK, top two or three, like they're top three in every category. They're a really, really good team. Um, you know, and it, it's our job to, to play our game and, and we feel we can, we have a chance that we do what we need to do. Is there something a little strange about with the matchup with BC that you're almost the more veteran team where a lot of the ways that BC has been described this year have been attributes that would have been stuck on this team in years past? Yeah, we see a lot of similarities to what we've uh, we've kind of gone through and experienced and you know what works and you know what you need to stay away from. So I think we have a good game plan. Is there anything about their game that stands out to you beyond those, uh, the top of the lineup, like NTDP guys and Gautier? Not really. I was to score a lot of goals. Dylan Duke scored a, a lot of big goals for you guys. Is there some that stand out to you maybe among the rest during your career here? He uh, he got banged up a little bit on his uh, hand. He's fine now. But he, I don't even think he could shoot a puck that game, and he scored two goals, which is unbelievable. Um, he's just a warrior, like we talked about before. Every big game that he plays, he has an impact, and not just on the score sheet. He's just a winner. He plays winning hockey. Did he injure his hand in the first game and then, and then or in the middle of the second game? The first, just the, like bumps and bruises right, type yeah. stuff, but he just he couldn't shoot. So. Right. Speaking of banged up, you said Chance is coming back. He's going to get, good, yeah. I guess, what, what does that do? I mean, just for morale as well. Yeah, it's huge. I'm super proud of the decor, everyone in general, just for stepping up with him out. Obviously, he's a huge part of our team, and to get him back is uh, exciting. Um, we've 
talked last week, I think, about the idea of like field position, and it feels as though the fourth line in particular has been one that's had a big part to play in that. Can you speak to the role that they were able to do with respect to that aspect of the game over the weekend? Yeah, I think uh, and even when like Draper, Ernesty, and stop were together, just just the forecheck. The forecheck keeps it in their zone and grinds them down, and, and especially if it's one of their top lines. Now, when they do get it out, they have to change, and, and hopefully we're coming right back at them. So, uh, momentum, extended possession. And then with a guy like Phil LaPointe, who you mentioned those juniors and seniors with a lot of experience, uh, if I'm not mistaken, he didn't actually play in the first four the last two times. Uh, what do you think he's brought to the team this year, and how can he like still lead with that experience of going it yeah, he, he's been around it. Phil's a locker room guy and, and obviously great on the bench and great on the ice and just brings positive energy and, um, you know, he knows what his role is and he's done a good job with it. Did you see Frank's assist at first? Did you know that it happened? I did. Like, I just caught the end of it. So it was, uh, that's that's what he does. Like I said before, he's a game breaker and uh, it was the right play too. It wasn't a fancy move. The, the, the lane wasn't there in his backhand. And uh, for him to do that on that stage is, we see it all the time, but it's super impressive. That, that seems like the type of play that it's loose. And that's whenever you're playing some of your best hockey, whenever you can play free. Is that kind of a sign of where the team is right now, heading into the biggest stage there is in college hockey? I'd like to think so. I, I think, uh, you know, you're fighting it. We all know about the third periods. And like a lot of those third periods, just like the third periods that we won recently, could have went a different way with a, a you know a big save, a big goal, or you know an inch here or there. Um, I think as we were learning to play winning hockey, it wasn't that they're like squeezing their sticks, um, but they're trying to play winning hockey. And they're trying to figure out what that is, and now they're they're making the right play at the right time, but they feel free to use their creativity while they play winning hockey, which is tough to do. And we're doing it at the right time of the year, which is great. Some of you guys were talking about it wasn't long ago you were on the bubble and the highs and lows of a season. What do you think the difference has been really in the last month or so? I just think like, we've always been a good team. The, the record wouldn't indicate that with the injuries and then like not getting things done in the third period, whether you're up or down a goal. Um, and it's just the belief in there and how close they are that they believe they can do it and now they feel like there's no way it doesn't happen. So when they go out, you know, we just we just make it work. But it's the confidence within the group and the leadership. What was it? Go ahead. Uh, what was your reaction to the news of the regions meeting last week with Denise Illich uh, advocating for varsity women's hockey here? Yeah, I think it's awesome. What do they, they have to do? A feasibility study to see if they can do it. I think it'd be great. So I think Jenna's done a really good job of uh, of trying to promote that. And I know the uphill battle that, that she probably has. I think it'd be great for uh, for women and for in youth hockey in, in Michigan. Have you had a chance to like, uh, kind of like stop and smell the roses along the way here? Or I, I mean, I know it's all business, but have you had a chance to sit back and think like, wow, this is pretty cool? Or is there something you look forward to? Uh, a little bit, it, it, a little bit yesterday after the game, it was fun just being around the guys at, at the hotel and stuff. Um, and just all the smiling faces. It, it, it feels like back to business. Like we've been this close before and um, I, I feel like it's a different feeling this year. We're not just happy to be there. We, we, we have a goal to accomplish and it's a business trip and uh, we're doing everything we can to prep um, to be prepared. And then, you know, and then the, and then the transfer portal's open too. So it's, it's actually been crazy in, in a fun way. Can I steer off of Sam's question from, from a little bit earlier? Um, when it comes to the, the depth contributions from, from four checking and defense, how important is that when a lot of the time we focus on scoring for, for depth? The depth is everything. Um, everyone on our team, whether you have 50 points or one point, needs to check. And then different guys have different skill sets where they can uh, contribute, whether it's off the rush, off the four check, or, or in our own zone. So I think depth is everything. You need everybody. And, uh, you know, with Seamus going down or Barzo stepping up, Frankie making a play at the right time, Duker making a play, that's that's depth. And then there's a lot of plays that didn't end up on the score sheet that the guys did that um, contributes to winning hockey. How are you approaching the transfer portal over the next week and a half as the season's still going, but there's hundreds of names out there? Yeah, a ton of credit to, to the three assistant coaches and all the stuff that they do so that I can do what I need to do. And then uh, we have a plan of, kind of who we want to target or how many guys we need to bring in. I think we have a better idea of 
where we're at going into next year than we had in the past, and that's something I've learned from. Um, so we feel good about it. We target a couple guys and see where it's at, and hopefully get some decisions here soon. You mentioned leaders. What have you seen from your captain Jacob Truscott this postseason? And is, has there any has there been anyone else that's really stepped up in the locker room? Uh, I feel like everyone stepped up. I, I think the Trusk has been the same the whole way through. We just happen to be winning now. He's been he's been outstanding. Um, but it's it's just like leadership by committee. Outside of that, like everyone like knowing your role, whether you play zero shifts or twenty minutes. Um, the positive bench energy, lifting guys up, and just doing what you can do to contribute to the team. Thoughts on the venue? Are you pretty confident that you're going to have a nice following out there? Oh, I think it's awesome. I thought last week was awesome. Honestly, like the the first night, you know, with two games and one set of tickets for two games, there were some empty seats, but uh, the atmosphere was awesome on Sunday, and obviously the play against Michigan State was great. I, I think with with these four teams in the Frozen Four, and then it being in St. Uh, St. Paul is going to be outstanding. Tampa was a blast. Boston was a blast. But just some about it being in Minnesota, I feel like the whole Twin Cities is is going to be doing that that weekend. So it'll be great.